Hey Lemon Beat students. So in today's video, it isn't really a tutorial series, but I am just going to talk on Sentry. So have you ever built an application and you end up getting some reports from your user about some errors? Most times, before a user would report an error to you, probably that user is your friend or they are really nice users. Most people don't have the patience to go and meet the developer to complain about a particular issue. Some who even have the time to complain will just give you a one-star review and complain not so nicely on your app page. It's good to write tests, but tests cannot cover everything. Sometimes you need real-time reporting and monitoring on the app so you could fix errors before your users report them. So we have Sentry, which is a wonderful tool for developers. If you check all the platforms that can make use of Sentry, we would see that every major platform can use Sentry. So from your JavaScript, your frameworks to your node, to Python, to PHP, Ruby, Go, Java, Android, Kotlin, Scala, and you name it. There's a developer package, so that means you can go on and use Sentry right away. Then you have a team plan and a business plan. You also have enterprise plan if you need more. If you scroll down, let's see what the free developer plan offers. You can have up to 5,000 errors per month. Then you have a history of 30 days. If you need to start, you can click get started. Now you can sign up with your GitHub or Azure DevOps. You can as well go and sign in normally. Sign up normally. This is my dashboard. And as you can see, when we want to start a new project, we have options of different languages. I'll click on Android. Let me give the project name Lemobit Android and assign it a team. So I create a project. So here is my dashboard. I've created a new project called Lemobit Android. So I haven't created any event from my application yet. So let's head over to the Android application and see what's in it. So here is my simple Android application. Let's imagine it is our next Facebook. So you get a value here. Get a value here. Add it and display the answer here. So here is our project. We have our first text view. So if I put three, our second text view, if I put six, if I come out, click add, it adds our two values and we have nine. So it's a very simple logic, though still better than Facebook. <laughs> and I'm just kidding. So we have our two texts, our button, and the text view that displays our answer. So once we click the button, we get the text, convert the values to an integer, and add them and you head over to display the answer now with an application like this of course it's easy to see where issues can arise when you have a bigger system you might not be able to cover for every possible case and things come up you know we deal with errors normally as developers. So let's say you publish this application. And what happened? One of the users felt funny one morning 
and decided to play a little bit. So they wrote China. So they want to add three to China. They just felt a little bit playful in the morning. And guess what? You didn't put any check to make sure they don't make this mistake. And it clicks add. Oops. The application crashes. When we head over to the log, we can click error. If you look on the error, you see number format exception for input string China. Now, when this app is published, you are not going to get this because this is running on the person's phone. In order to get this, you need some form of reporting system that can help you report these errors. Because for the user, he or she does not know or care what a number format exception is. Most likely, the person will uninstall this application. If the person really feels angry, might head over to Play Store and give you a one-star review. I know how dangerous one-star reviews are. So to sort this out, let's add Sentry to the project so that once it crashes, we can head over and fix it. Once we add Sentry, any app that crashes on any device we we'll send what caused the crash, when the crash happened, and a lot more information that can help you sort it out. So how do you add Sentry to project? Like I said, this is a pure project, nothing fancy here. When we check the documentation, integrating with Java SDK, you have integrating with Node and other platforms, but like in other things, they are all similar. For now, let's look at Android. Using Gradle, put this in your app build.gradle. So we get this. Now that we have added this, let's go over to the next step. Now, because our application uses internet access, let's add this to our manifest. So we add these two permissions since we're going to be dealing with internet access. We need to initialize our Sentry client. So let's do that in our application. So to initialize Sentry, we would need these three lines. We get the context, the Sentry DNS, we will get that from our dashboard and then we initialize it with the DNS and our Sentry client factory, which takes in our context. So we used get application context to get the context in this particular context. <laughs> So let's get the Sentry DNS. Let me go over to settings. We click projects. So this is the project we just created. Let's click it. So in this whole project, you will see a place where you would see client keys, DN, client keys, DSN. Client keys DSN. I think I've mistakenly become in it DNS. <laughs> so we'll come over here, we we'll copy it. We can come and paste it. So each of your project we have a unique sentry DNS. 
So when you go to your dashboard, you will see the DNS for your own particular project. I'm still calling it DNS. Ah, oh, the particular DSN. <laughs> So with this, we have initialized Sentry. So we have our context, our Sentry DSN, and then we initialize it, Sentry DSN and the Android Client Factory. Now, before we continue, we want to make sure that when we're sending a report, that we know which user this is coming from. So let's set the particular user for this particular instance. So for each instance of the application, you can set a different username. But let's make this username constant. So this is what we use to set the user. So sentry dot get context dot set user. So set user takes in a user. So we build a user using the user builder. Apart from the username, you could also set the email of the user. So I could go on and say set email. So over here I can say lemo bit students at lemobit.com so we have the username and the email you can set the ip address you see more you could even set some specific information about the user in this set data collect a map so you see it's wonderful but currently let's let us leave it as set username let us surround this operation in a try catch exception handling so we'll say try so if you want to send an event to sentry we would say sentry dot capture capture this event and that's it you could do what you want to do normally to handle the exception but over here we have sent this event to sentry now in addition sometimes you want to know what created that error you want to be able to you know recreate the error you want to know what the user clicked at what time so sometimes you know that the application crashed yes that is very good sentry has done a great work but then what if you understand the error but you don't understand what led to the error so sentry has what we call breadcrumbs you can use it to track what led to what what the user is doing and what is going on in the application let's just record when the user clicks a button so this is actually okay for lemobit students we have initialized sentry here we have recorded that this is being run by lemobit student and then we had a breadcrumb here to make sure that whatever happens we know that the person just clicked the button and then in case anything goes wrong we capture the error so now if we come over here and then we have four and three and we click add we see seven but let's say we come over here and we write Nigeria. You know, somebody just wants to play. And we say add. Because we used exception handling, our application does not crash. But it should send the error to 
22 century for us to see what happened. We can see a number format exception. So let's see what's up. Hmm, really interesting. So we see the IP, we see the Android version, a lot of information here. It gives you the exact error that caused this exception. We have the username. Remember when we set the username? Yeah. The device. We have the device is Android. Battery level 100%. It even tells you the battery level. That is really nice. It tells you whether it was online. It tells you the manufacturer. It's pretty detailed. Now you could see that user clicked add button this is the breadcrumb we added a breadcrumb here now you know that the user clicked the add button before this happened if you're interested in the line you see it's at line 45 line 45 happens to be this that is trying to convert the second value to an integer. And we can see the second value was actually what was the wrong value. So perhaps after seeing an error, you could fix it. So if you want to clear it and declare it as resolved, you could take it and you have different options you can see resolve now you could have a lot of different issues and in your different plans you know we saw what we had different plans you could have a team where you assign someone to fix an issue when you're using git for your version control you could find which commit is responsible for this error. So I haven't given you the detailed example of what Sentry could do, but this is just an overview and for you to go on and check it out. I would put a link below for you to check out Sentry and give it a try. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing for more beautiful tools like Sentry. Oh.